Hi guys, it's Jess from Honest Fiction and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be sharing my favorite fall romance recommendations. Alright guys, so fall is my absolute favorite type of year, mostly because I just love spooky season, I love watching horror movies, I love being scared, I love going to like haunted houses. So I've been reading a ton of amazing romance books that either have like a gothic setting or they feature like demons or paranormal creatures. So I kind of broke this down by creatures, so we have vampires, we have werewolves, we have demons, we have ghosts, and we just have books that have that overall fall feel. So if you're unfamiliar with my channel, I post new videos every Thursday and Sunday. If you haven't yet, please like and subscribe. You can also hit the notification bell to be notified whenever I post new bookish content. You can also check out my Instagram and Goodreads, both linked down below. With all that out of the way, let's get into these fall romance recommendations. All right, so I'm going to be starting off with witchy romances. So first up we have Hollow Heathens, and this is by Nicole Fiorina. So this is kind of like a gothic witch romance. We are following Fallon. And in the beginning of the story, Fallon's father has passed away. Now, Fallon's mother died during childbirth, so she is pretty much alone. The only family member she still has living is her grandfather, who actually lives in the town she was born into, but hasn't ever gone back to visit. So her and her grandfather just communicate via letters, and one day she gets a letter from her grandfather saying, I'm very sick, I need you to come back to Weeping Hollow. So Fallon realizes she has no ties to the community she's currently living in, she has no family, so she goes to visit her grandfather. And when she gets there, her grandfather's like, I did not send for you, why are you here? So right away, she's kind of like, hmm, something's up. And then she meets this very mysterious guy who's wearing a mask, and he is very distant towards her right off the get, and she's trying to figure out what is going on in this community. So she eventually realizes that this entire town is comprised of different rival witch covens. And it kind of goes from there. I loved, loved the romance in this book. Fallon and Julian were like the Romeo and Juliet retelling relationship that I didn't know I needed. Like I was rooting for them 100%. And I love the witchy gothic elements of this story. They really like go into these different witch covens and the history. And I really did enjoy the rivalry. The one thing I will say, the magic system is super muddled. Like a lot of things don't make a lot of sense. Uh, there's a character going around unaliving people and no one really seems to care or notice. And this is a very small town. There's also one part, and this is the tiniest of spoilers. It happens very early in the story that Fallon's like, see something very disturbing. And she's like, I need to leave. So she tries to leave Weeping Hollow and she can't. So like she is driving, trying to leave. And then it puts her right back at Weeping Hollow's gates. And she's like, oh, I guess it's magic and I can't leave. Which I just, I wanted a more like genuine reaction. If that happened to me, I would be freaking out. And she's just like, oh, I guess I'm stuck here. Like, I don't know. That just seemed really funny to me and it really stuck out. But like I said, I loved the romance. And if you enjoyed the Stay With Me series, or if you've read the Stay With Me series, Nicole Fiorina has a very interesting writing style that I really enjoy. And I think her writing style, coupled with this like gothic setting, just really works. So I highly recommend if you want a really good witchy romance, check out Hollow Heathens. And this next witchy book is more of like a spooky rom-com. So we have The X-Hex, and this is by Erin Sterling. So I actually read this last October and really enjoyed it. I believe the second book in the series either just released or is about to be released. But this is following Vivian. In the beginning of the story, she is dating a guy named Reese, and he's a warlock, and he ends up breaking up with her. So Vivian is just super distraught. So she goes home, she has a bubble bath, she's drinking a bunch of wine, and she ends up hexing her ex-boyfriend. But she doesn't actually think it sticks. She is a witch, but she was just kind of like having fun and wishing the worst on her ex. So then years go by and Reese ends up returning to the town that she lives in to help strengthen these ley lines. And these ley lines are these things that really like help a witch's magic and a warlock's magic. So he's there to help strengthen them. And when he gets back to town, horrible things just start happening to him. And Vivian realizes that she might have accidentally hexed her ex. And it goes from there. There's just like a lot of fun, like spooky shenanigans. And this really gave me like hocus pocus, practical magic feels. And it was pretty emotional. And this is easily a book you can read in one sitting. And I just really enjoyed it. So like it wasn't an absolutely amazing read, but it was definitely a good time while I was reading it. 
and I highly, highly recommend. Okay, so moving into werewolf romances. Now, I've said this in other videos. I was never a huge fan of shifter romances. I was always team vampire, team Edward. However, I read this book and it changed everything. So we have Wolf Song, and this is by TJ Klune. This is by far my favorite werewolf romance. Oh my gosh, I cried. So this is following Ox, and in the beginning of the story, Ox's father is abandoning his family. Now, Ox is described as being simple by the community, and he is just this very caring guy. And he's a boy in the start of the story, and his father really instilled in him that he is, like, worthless and that life is going to give him shit. And he thinks about that throughout this entire book. So anyway, he's just trying to make the best of his life. He takes care of his mother. He's working in this garage with his male, like, parental figure, um, oh my gosh, Gordo. And he's just living life. And one day he's walking home from the garage and he sees this adorable little boy and this boy just won't stop talking. And the boy ends up being Joe and we find out that Joe actually, prior to meeting Ox, hadn't spoken for two years. And Joe brings Ox home to meet his family and the family just right away includes Ox. It's very much a found family. And then we realize the family is actually a bunch of werewolves. And Joe is going to be the next alpha of the werewolves. And the story goes from there and it is just so good. I will say the beginning is very slow, but I think it is so necessary for you to get all of these small moments and understand this relationship just to really value this book. So this is a male male romance and it's just it's it's so good. So highly recommend it has a good amount of emotional moments but then there's also action and it's just it's the perfect werewolf romance. So definitely if you are thinking about it pick it up. I cannot wait to continue with this series. All right and this next book features actually both werewolves and witches and it had been on my radar for a while. I just finished reading it yesterday and that is Wolf Gone Wild. Now, I am very particular when it comes to rom-coms and I have to be in the right mood. I will say, this book was so much better than I was expecting. I am 100% gonna continue with this series, which I did not think I was going to wanna do. So this is following Mateo, and at the start of the story, he is a werewolf, and for some reason, he hasn't been able to shift for the last three months. And this is causing him a lot of pain because his werewolf wants to come out. So he kind of doesn't have multiple personalities, but he can hear his werewolf in his head and his werewolf is trying to like take over his body. So he is trying to find a witch to break the hex he believes that has been put on him that is preventing him from shifting. So he ends up meeting Evie and she is a witch that specializes in hexes and she agrees to help him. So she brings him back. She has a bunch of sisters. They all have a certain type of magic that they specialize in and they are trying to break this hex. And it is Julian, or not Julian, it is Mateo and Evie's relationship. And I just, I loved it so much. Evie is like kind of a nerd. She loves Star Wars and comic books. And I really loved her character. And then you have Mateo, who's really struggling with the fact that he has this wolf that is trying to break out of him, but he's also kind of trying to court Evie. And it was just so fun. The humor in this, it's really good. I found myself laughing out loud multiple times, which once again is something that doesn't normally happen when I read romantic comedies. And I just really loved the relationship and following these characters. And the side characters were also really funny and interesting. And there are some relationships that I know are gonna come up that I am so looking forward to reading about. So highly recommend if you want a good werewolf witch romance, check out Wolf Gone Wild. All right, so moving into vampires, I'm gonna do a full vampire recommendations video because I have read a lot of vampire romances recently, but this first one I'm gonna talk about, I also finished this week. It is Court of the Vampire Queen by Katie Roberts. So I did not realize this is actually a bind up of three different books. Um, I listened to it via audio. It was about a 15 hour audio if you don't speed it up. And I went into this knowing that it was very, very smutty. So I would definitely classify this more as like vampire erotica. It was still enjoyable. Like I liked the story. Just know going in, you are getting possibly more smut than plot. And that's okay. You kind of expect it with Katie, well, not all Katie Robert books, but a lot of Katie Robert books, but she's also really good at writing smut, so it's kind of okay. So the overall story is following Mina, and she is a half vampire, half, not even half. She is a part vampire, mostly human girl, that ends up 
being given to Malachi, who is a bloodline vampire. He's a very, very strong vampire. And we don't know, but for some reason, at the very beginning of the story, he has not fed for over 20 years. So Mina is very angry towards her father because her father is the one who sold her to Malachi. And right away, like, Mina walks in and Malachi bites her. We find out that bloodline vampires' bites are very pleasurable to Mina, and she has a good time for a while. And then she meets another vampire that is in a relationship with Malachi, and they all have a good time. And then we meet another vampire, and it kind of goes from there. So as the story progresses, we find out a little bit more about, like, vampire, not even politics, but kind of, like, the hierarchies of vampires. And it's fun. If you want a smutty vampire story, I think you will 100% enjoy the series. I was never bored. I was entertained the entire time. Just know what you are getting going into it. And this next book actually deals with both vampires and werewolves, and I've talked about it previously on my channel. However, when I was reading Court of the Vampire Queen, I kept, specifically the first book in Court of the Vampire Queen, I kept thinking about this series and just being like, oh, I really enjoyed this series just because of the amount of like deep tales and like depths of like the political scheming and everything going on with it. So we have the Blood Alliance series, and this is by Lexi C. Foss. This is the first three book bound up, and I really enjoyed this series. So this entire series is taking place in a world where vampires and lichens have taken over the world, and humans are more seen as second class citizens. They have no rights, they are used for breeding and for blood, and that is it their lives pretty much don't matter. And we are following the relationships between humans and vampires that are pretty high up in the hierarchy. And then also werewolves that are also like mostly alphas and things of that nature. And throughout this entire book, we are seeing these couples trying to figure out a way to create a better world. And I just really, really enjoyed this series. It is super spicy, like Court of the Vampire Queen, but also I just feel like it has more depth in terms of like story. And I really enjoyed it. So I finished the fourth book. I still believe there's two more in the series I haven't read. And I really look forward to seeing what happens with these characters. All right, so moving in to Paranormal slash Demons. First up, we have Her Soul to Take by Harley LaRoe. I've been wanting to read this book since last October. However, the audio was finally released at the end of September. So I just listened to it. And I have thoughts. I ended up enjoying this way more than I thought I was going to once I was about halfway into it. So we are following Ray and Leon. Leon is a demon. So he will sometimes be summoned and then he has to do whoever summons him's will. So at the beginning of the story, there is this kind of like cult living in this small town that has the grimoire that's able to summon Leon. So Leon has to go around and kill people and he's very not okay with it. So while he is out patrolling one day, he sees Ray, and she is essentially Velma from Scooby-Doo, but make her sexy, and she's really into the occult and wants to be a ghost uh, hunter, I guess, for YouTube. She has a YouTube channel, and I really liked all of that. So Ray just moved back to her hometown, and she's going to college there, and like I said, she meets Leon, and she is fascinated by Leon, and Leon's fascinated by her because she is not scared at Leon upon sight. Now, I said he's a demon, but he obviously, like, disguises himself as a human, but still he just has an aura of danger, and for some reason, Ray just isn't, doesn't bother her. So one day, Ray is in the library, and she ends up finding the grimoire, and she ends up summoning Leon, which she did not mean to do, and then she finds out that there are people that plan on killing Ray and using her as a human sacrifice. So Leon and Ray kind of like begrudgingly team up to try to stop this occult group. Now, I will say, writing, not so great, and the very beginning made this seem like it was going to be like super, super smutty with very little plot. However, I loved the horror and the occult feels of this book. I feel like once we got to the part where we knew like what was happening with this whole cult and everything involving the grimoire, I just loved all of the demons and there are these like creepy monsters that Leon has to fight off. And it was just, it was a really unique feel for a romance. I've never read a demon romance before and I just thought this was so much fun and also creepy. It was just like the perfect amount of horror and romance. And the smut was great. I mean, it kind of has like a whole BDSM thing where Leon wants to be like the boss and Ray was submitting to him. And I, I really, really enjoyed this way more than I thought I was going to. I will say I was listening to this 
via audio when I was driving on a car trip and my husband was in the car and I was like, oh, this probably is not the right audiobook to be listening to with him. Um, so I ended up changing it. Either way, that was a tangent. I did really enjoy this and I think that if you want a creepy, spicy demon romance, definitely read Her Soul to Take. And this next book I am putting in with Paranormal because it has ghosts in it and I really didn't have any other category to stick it in. So we have The Dead Romantics and this is by Ashley Poston. So this is kind of like a ghost emotional rom-com. So I've described this as being a spooky Emily Henry type book. We are following Florence and she is a ghostwriter and she writes romance. Unfortunately, her longtime boyfriend just broke up with her and she cannot finish her last book. She's just not in the romantic mood. And to make matters worse, she now has a new editor and he is very attractive and very upset with her that this last book hasn't been put out yet. So after meeting with him, she gets a call finding out that her father has passed away. Now, Florence and her father were really close and also they could both see ghosts. So Florence ends up going back to her hometown to try to take care of her father's funeral. Her entire family owns like a mortuary. So it's just really dealing with like parental loss. So one day while she is with her family, they're talking about what to do about their father's death. There's a knock on the door and when she opens it, it's a ghost who's looking for her. And the story goes from there. So like I said, this was way more emotional than I thought it was gonna be. We were really dealing with Florence and the death of her father and how it leaves her and like a death of a family member. And it was just super sad. But also I loved the romance. I did not guess the ending and I just, it was really fun. It kind of reminded me a little bit of Ghost, uh, the movie. But it's just funny seeing Florence interacting with this ghost that like no one else can see. And we find out that her hometown already thinks she's a little crazy for saying that she can see ghosts. And I just, I really enjoyed it. It was really fun. Also super short. So another book you can read easily in one sitting. And I highly recommend if you're looking for a good emotional rom-com involving ghosts and the paranormal. And last up we have monster romance. Now, if you're familiar with my channel, you know I have a lot of feelings towards monster romance. I have a vlog where I read my first three and that vlog is all over the place. So I will leave it in the cards and in the description. So this first book is A Lady of Rook's Grave Vader. This is a reverse harem monster romance. It was the first one I ever read and I have so many thoughts, but it is perfect if you want every single monster. So in the beginning of the story, we meet Esther and she is working as like a maid in this very wealthy house. And we find out that she has a very strong sexual appetite. She's a little bit of a nymphomaniac. She's really, really into sex. And this guy ends up being like, oh, I have the perfect job for you. You can work at this house of like ill repute and you can get paid just to sleep with a bunch of monsters and she is like done i'm gonna do it so she goes to this house and she ends up being in a relationship with dr jekyll mr hyde a vampire a golem a sphinx and just everything so most of this book is just her and monsters having a good old time and if that is what you are looking for this book is probably going to be perfect for you Personally, I wanted a little bit more going on. Towards the end of the book, we did get a little bit more of a plot. Uh, but most of this book is just Esther having a great time with monsters. And I will say, it was really unique. It was really entertaining. And I think that if that is what you're looking for, and if that is what I knew it was going into it, I probably would have enjoyed it a lot. It is really fun. So highly recommend if you're looking for a very spicy reverse harem monster romance, check out The Lady of Rookscrape Manor. And also I believe there is a sequel because the first book does end not with a cliffhanger, but a very like exciting revelation. So I feel like the second book is probably pretty good. I don't know if I'll pick it up, but just so you know, the second book was recently released. So definitely check that out. And last up, I have two super spicy monster novellas. So first up we have The Beast by Jenna Gusto, and this is a Beauty and the Beast retelling, but the Beast stays a beast, and it's pretty much just a very short clip of their relationship when the Beast first steals Beauty, and it has, it has a lot going on. It is probably one of the spiciest books I've ever read, so just know that going into it, and it is a novella, so it is quite short, so most of this book is that spicy time. However, if you want monster romance, this is, this is just full full monster romance. And then the second one I also just read is The Hunter. This is a little bit longer. And this is a kind of Red Riding Hood wolf 
romance, it's mostly just a wolf romance where there is a wolf, he sees this girl and it takes her back to his den and he's like, you're mine. And it was, once again, one of the spiciest books I've ever read in my entire life and the wolf is very much a wolf, not a werewolf. He is just, he's wolf, all wolf, everything is wolf. So if you want to check this series out, let me know if you guys read these books because I have not seen a lot of people talking about these and they are, they are a time. So anyway, definitely if you want monster romance, look no further than The Hunter and the Beast by Jerrica Snow. All right guys, that is it for my recommendations. Please let me know down in the comments below what is your favorite spooky season romance. I love getting recommendations in the comments. And I said this already, I post new videos every Thursday and Sunday. And if you haven't yet, please like and subscribe. I will see you all next week. Bye.